What's up guys, Kim here of Fugitech, and no, this is not an Oppo F9. It's actually the Oppo R17 Pro. They may look similar at first glance, but there's a ton of other things that the latter offers, and we're gonna take a look at them. This is our hands-on of the Oppo R17 Pro. So this phone was actually announced in China back in August, and now that its November release is getting closer, we finally got some time with it. Looking at the front, it looks almost exactly like an Oppo F9, largely because of that water drop notch design. Which we still strongly prefer because it's not as intrusive as the traditional rectangular notch. We have one more similarity with the F9 in the 25 megapixel front camera that is housed in the notch. But it has a 6.4 inch AMOLED screen running at 1080p, compared to the F9 6.3 inch 1080p IPS screen. It's a lot nicer since it's an AMOLED panel, so we get richer colors, deeper blacks, and it's brighter. But the biggest thing the R17 Pro screen has over the F9s is actually under the screen. Like the Oppo Find X, Vivo Nex S, X21, and V11, the R17 Pro comes with an indistinct Display fingerprint scanner. Covering the entire front face is Corning Gorilla Glass 6 and even an included screen protector. The rest of the body feels different, but in a good way. For example, the body is now made of metal with indents at the top and the bottom. Now let's flip things over to the back, where things get a little more interesting. The back panel isn't glossy at all. Would you look at that? It has this 3D misted or frosted glass effect that kind of resembles water condensation and metal. It provides this cool gradient effect that shifts between purple and blue, which is a very popular trend nowadays. It's very easy to grip and much nicer to hold. But other than the pretty surface, the back houses a triple camera setup. It has 12 megapixel, 20 megapixel, and a TOF or time of flight 3D stereo camera. It's a range imaging camera system that can get a subject's detailed 3D depth information by using infrared light. It's high precision and allows you to scan an object to make a 3D model and take 3D photos. In any case, another of the R17 Pro's selling points is that it's beast in low-light photography. Checking out the sample shots we took in Shenzhen is looking to be true. We were able to get some clean and bright-looking shots at night. Looking at the rest of the body, we have the volume keys on the left and the power button on the right. They're solid and clicky, but they're also pretty easy to reach since they're in the middle. And down at the bottom, we have the loudspeaker, main microphone, USB Type-C port, and dual SIM tray. It accepts two nano size SIM cards and nothing else. Sorry guys, no micro SD support here, but hey, you do get 128 gigabytes of storage, which is probably more than enough for most of us. Powering the R17 Pro is a Snapdragon 710, which is a new powerful mid-range Qualcomm chipset that we expect to perform closer to the 800 series rather than the 600 series. Also, 6GB or 8GB of RAM, 128GB of internal storage, and a 3700mAh battery that does support Oppo's Super VOOC fast charging. We saw this firsthand with the Oppo F9, and it truly is really fast. You can check out our 5-minute challenge video if you want, we'll leave the link in the description down below. The Oppo R17 Pro is scheduled to launch in the Philippines on November 7, but no official price has been mentioned yet. Since it sits below flagship level but above the mid-range F9, we expect it to cost maybe around the neighborhood of 25,000 pesos, more or less. What do you guys think of the Oppo R17 Pro? Are you excited for it to arrive in the Philippines? Let us know in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for more content, and be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified of our future uploads. Also visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this is Kim of Yugatech, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!